I'm Professor Don Gifford from the University of Maryland Law School, and in my remarks today at lunch, what I shared with the group is my deep skepticism that public nuisance can legitimately and effectively be used by state governments and by municipal governments as a solution to product-caused public health problems or to, to some extent also uh, to address global warming issues. Yeah, I think that the, the theme of the symposium is obviously uh, uh, the, the focus is on the, the tort of public nuisance and I've written extensively in the past about how I don't think that the common law of public nuisance is adequate to support the kinds of things that the state governments tried to do in the tobacco litigation, that the state of Rhode Island tried to do in the lead pigment litigation. And uh, what I tried to say at lunch was that it's not just the, the tort of public nuisance, but it's the combination of public nuisance, it's the combination of the idea that state governments are going to try to sue product manufacturers when they uh, when the victims of product caused diseases don't can't do that themselves and finally that they're doing this because they're the the state attorney generals and the and the plaintiffs firms are deeply skeptical that our ordinary political processes that congress and state legislatures and administrative agencies can can solve these problems and uh, it, it all reminds me of a uh, famous quote by Winston Churchill who uh, once said that uh, uh, democracy may not be perfect but it's the best form of government that we've ever had. There's nothing that's going on in this cycle of litigation that convinces me that Churchill was wrong. I think that legislative solutions and solutions through the political branches are more likely to be effective or more likely to be appropriate within our constitutional framework than our situations in which trial court judges and mass plaintiff's attorneys uh, try to impose their own solutions to societal problems.